explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about fresh RSS. And in the before time, the long long ago, before we got all our news from Facebook or TikTok, we actually had newspapers that were sent out every day that you could read in paper form. And when they tried to digitize that, they made a bunch of different web pages. So you needed to go to a lot of different places in order to read your news. And at the same time, people started the blogging as well. So you got a lot of text at the same time that needed to be aggregated in some way. And in order to get it aggregated, we needed a really simple syndication protocol, RSS, in order to distribute this data. And Fresh RSS is an RSS reader that is trying to aggregate these news feeds into one flow so you can actually read it simply. Um, there were before a lot of different kinds of these RSS readers, but they have fallen out of favor because we get our news other ways now. But I wanted one in order to read some of my blogs so I can actually follow up on news. So I wanted to install Fresh RSS. And I'm setting up a pure Debian install here, and then I'm gonna do an install of this uh, feed reader. So if we switch over to, my, over to my screen here, I can start the install. And usually when you have a Debian install, you need to have it fully upgraded. So let's run that process and get the sudo password in as well. So we have that all up to date. So it's a fully update to date Debian system. Then we need a bunch of dependencies. So we need a patch. I will run it on an Apache web server. That is not required. You can do any web server that you like. It ha doesn't have an included web server, so you need one. But I'm running a patch at this time. I need PHP. That's the main language for a simple RSS. I will use the MariaDB. It also supports SQLite and Postgres. Uh, it wants to have curl in order to do upgrades. If you install a, a normal um, version, you can do that by curling the new version. Uh, MB string is good for different languages. You can actually handle um, languages like yeah, Latin and so on. Uh, and then we have MySQL, of course, the PHP plugin for that. Zip, so it can unzip if it does an install. Um, XML, it handles a bunch of different XML formats. So uh, simple RSS is an XML format, so you need that. And in my case, I'm using Git because I will get the Git repository directly from the source. So that's why I'm installing that. So a bunch of different libraries and uh, dependencies to install. And there the install is done. And as soon as you install an infrastructure service, you want to make it secure. And the team at MariaDB has done this very simply by having a script called MySQL Secure Installation. If we run that, we could enter the current user for root, it's nothing at the moment, which is not good. Uh, we want to switch to use the Unix socket. Uh, we want to change the root password. So here we need to put in a secure root password, not QWERTY as I do. We want to remove the anonymous user. We want to disallow um, remote login. If you have a web server that actually connects to a different database server, of course you need to keep that open. And I want to remove the test database and reload all the privileges. So now my MariaDB is up and running and ready to start working. So if we log into it here and uh, supply the password, then I can create the database here. So I want to create a fresh RSS database. Nothing strange there. And I also want to set privileges to it. So I will grant all privileges to this fresh RSS database, all tables to the user fresh RSS at localhost, identified by QWERTY. Not the best password, but it works. Now I want to install uh, the software. So let's switch over to my www directory here in var, and I will git clone my own repository of fresh RSS here, and I will show you why later on. Um, so let's clone that out. It's not that much data. 
We want to make it readable by ourselves, my user. So I changed it over. So recursive, all directories of the fresh RSS. I want my user to own that. And then I can go into this directory and then I want the data directory to be uh, owned by VVV data, which is the Apache web server. So it can actually read and write there because it will read and write feeds to that directory. And then we want to configure the site. This could be configured as a virtual uh, host site of any kind, but in my case, I'm just gonna use the default one and switch it over. It has a document route of HTML, so let's change that to fresh RSS and the root directory for the website is just P. I don't know why, but you put it in P. Um, and there is a bunch of other directories here. You have a P, you have a uh, lib, data and so on. And, and data is where you have all that uh, data. And app is the application. You have a CLI interface. Uh, you could add uh, extensions. There is a bunch of docs. You could run it in a Docker container and so on. So there is a, a bunch of different options here. And then I want to reload my Apache here. So if you go over to my... Uh, browser here and go to I think 61 was the next IP or maybe 62 yeah there we have it so uh, this is my fresh RSS install I want to use language English of course it does a bunch of checks here so see that everything is installed we all already went through all the different things that was required so we have all green here but if you have missed a step or haven't installed all the dependencies you can see here what you are missing uh, if we go to the next step here if you have postgres installed or sqlite you can choose it as a database type here then we have the database username which was fresh rss the password i put in dash qwerty and the database uh, let's go back is the same as fresh RSS here so and then I want to put in a user and I will just have the same password here and congratulations installation process is done so here we are in the actual interface of this service and we can see here that we have all the releases um, in informed here so you already get an RSS feed of the release schedule of this application so you know when you need to update so here we can go in and read what's in the 121 release of this application so that's really nice um, I want to go into the subscription management here and here you can add a feed so you just put in a new feed URL press add and then you have that in your system uh, I have a bunch of feeds already, so I will import those. If I go in here, uh, choose one of uh, these files and import that, it will import 10 feeds that I have set up already. And you see here what I think is a little bit of a problem. So here I get a bunch of news from DN, which is a Swedish news source. I get some YouTube uh, from TechCrunch uh, in there. I get some Hacker News later on. So these are not in the publication date order. And this had actually been discussed a lot in the Fresh RSS community. If we look at this um, GitHub post here, they say, okay, it's not in the right order. The developer said that, yeah, you can do a search like this to get a specific date. And then they were talking about that, that it's not really possible at the moment and it's really hard to do. 17 dislikes of that post. Uh, and on another post here, they are outlining what is the problematic part about this and other systems are not accustomed to this and so on. Uh, and it got some dislikes as well. It gets better if you run it for a while. As I did now when I imported a bunch of feeds, they are in a very uh, strange order. But if you update this after an hour, for instance, and you get new news, it's 
added in the way that it, it goes by ID and the ID is added to the database. So it's a kind of freshness met metric. Um, but so you don't get the perfect date, but you get better at least uh, if you run it for a while. So this is the worst case scenario, I would say. But if we switch over to my repository here again, uh, we actually have this checked out and I have made a small change here that I could check out. So if I check out um, order by date instead, so I have a different branch for that uh, and then switch back to this screen here. In the settings now, uh, in the reading order, I have added this extra checkbox. Uh, sort by publish date, disable pagination. So if you have um, the ordering of publish date, it can be a little bit tricky to get the pagination to be correct. And I didn't want to fuss with that because I have a bunch of feeds, but you, uh, if you remove after 200 uh, messages, you never really get a long list. So it will not take that much time to actually load it. And you read more than you actually load. So disabling pagination in my case is not that uh, bad. So if I check this and save it down here, it will remove this article per page, disable that. And also this load more article at the bottom it will be disabled. So if we switch back to this screen then, you see now they come in publication date order instead, which is a better way of reading it in my opinion. So I made it a checkbox so you could choose if you want to use it or not. Um, and I will probably make a PR of this. I don't know if the main developer thinks this is a good idea or not. They have spoken out multiple times and said that this is not something that the community wants. But if you have at least 20 people that, thinks that think that that is a bad decision, maybe they could reconsider. Um, so I will install this on my system so I can actually read some news. I think it's a very useful tool. It's pretty nice interface. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have a bunch of RSS feeds that you want to follow, and keep track of news, why not try this out? So if you look at the commit I made here, it's not that much of a change. Uh, this is using this kind of model view controller um, interface. So in order to get something in, I needed to add to the controller that I needed to read something out. Uh, I added to the index controller that I wanted to read the specific thing. Um, and then I put it into the entry DAO list where, so I know this value in the data access object or something like that, DAO. Um, and then we have a way of saving this and the context, we need to keep it in the fresh context so we can actually use it later on. Um, and then in the DAO here, we have two different changes. One is the publication date, we can change it if it's sort by publication date, then we use order by date instead of order by ID. Uh, and we do that twice. Uh, so we have another one down here uh, that does the sim similar things on another expression. And then we have a bunch of ways of sending it in to different functions. And here we have some uh, translation. And in this form group here, I just add to uh, two other posts here that I want to disable those if it is set. And last but not least, we add it to the JavaScript. And at the bottom here, when we have uh, two handling of the auto scroller to uh, load more, I disable those as well in JavaScript. So it's not that much code, uh, but it's Something that you could use uh, if required to have a feed in publication date order without pagination. So this was what I wanted to cover today. 
I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.